Hello, and welcome to my presentation on Transport Layer Security 1.3, which is a new security feature in JDK 11. My name is Sean Mullen, and I'm a member of the Security Libraries team at Oracle. So first, as some background, let's start with a brief overview of TLS. TLS is a standard protocol for allowing clients and servers to securely to communicate securely over the internet. It provides the security properties of confidentiality, authenticity, and integrity. TLS is most commonly used by web browsers and web servers to secure data sent over the internet. The JDK includes implementations of various versions of the SSL and TLS protocols. Specifically, SSL version 3, TLS version 1.0 and 1.2, DTLS, which is the datagram version of TLS, version 1.0 and 1.2, and now with JDK 11, TLS version 1.3. Note that SSL v3 is widely considered insecure and unsafe to use and is disabled by default in the JDK. When using TLS in your Java applications, you can use the javax.net and javax.net.ssl packages in the java.base module. These are lower level APIs for using SSL and TLS and are often referred to as JSSE or the Java Secure Socket Extension. If you are using HTTP and you want to establish a secure connection using HTTPS, you can now use the new JDK 11 HTTP client API, which is in the java.net.http package in the java.net.http module. So why do we need another version of TLS? Why do we need TLS 1.3? Let's take a brief look at some of the issues that these protocols have had over the years. First, SSL v3 had multiple vulnerabilities and is formally deprecated in RFC 7568. It should no longer be used in practice. The TLS protocols have had many challenges over the last 20 or so years. RFC 747 gives a really good summary of these attacks and is interesting to see. TLS versions 1.0 and 1.1 are both now quite old and are rapidly being phased out. TLS version 1.2 is the current TLS best practice, but it itself is also fairly old, about 10 years old. So there was general consensus that it needed to be updated with more modern and latest crypto practices and advancements. So TLS 1.3 was about four years in the making. It was recently published in August 2018 as RFC 8446. TLS 1.3 is a major overhaul of the TLS protocol with two primary benefits, enhanced security and improved speed. Let's take a look at each of those improvements in a bit more detail. So enhanced security, less is safer. TLS 1.3 removes support for outdated cryptography, which improves the security and makes it less likely a session can be broken because of an insecure cipher suite or some other form of weak cryptography that was used. The removal of the cryptography outdated cryptography includes such functionality such as static RSA and Diffie-Hellman key exchange, CBC mode ciphers, MD5 and SHA-1 hash functions, triple DES and RC4 ciphers, and arbitrary Diffie-Hellman groups. TLS 1.3 also removes unsafe features such as compression and renegotiation. This is not a complete list. You should see the RFC and other online literature for other features that have been removed or simplified. In general, TLS 1.3 supports fewer and more modern crypto algorithms. It adds support for RSA, SSA-PSS signature algorithm, the ChaCha20 and Poly1305 stream ciphers, 
the X25519 and X448 elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman key agreement mechanisms, and the Edwards curve digital signature algorithm. All of these are more modern cryptographic algorithms that are more efficient and more secure. TLS 1.3 is also faster than previous versions of the TLS protocol. It has a completely new handshake module, which requires fewer round trips. TLS 1.2 requires two round trips for a complete handshake. However, TLS 1.3 uses one round trip by default, and optionally with pre-shared keys, can use zero round trips. So here are some details about the TLS 1.3 implementation in JDK 11. This feature was defined in JEP 3.3.2, and the goal of the JEP was to produce an interoperable TLS 1.3 implementation supporting all of the required features as of per the, per the RFC. The implementation, therefore, does not support many of the optional features as specified in the RFC. However, many of those optional features are considered important and, and will hopefully be added in subsequent releases of the JDK. There are no new APIs that we had to add to support JDK, the, the TLS 1.3 implementation. So therefore, you use the same Java APIs when using TLS 1.3 as you did for previous TLS versions. However, there are some new algorithms made. There is now a TLS v1.3 SSL context algorithm and a TLS v1.3 protocol name. And there are two new cipher suites, both of which are requirements of the RFC. There is one new security property named jdk.tls.keylimits, and you can use this to limit the amount of data an algorithm may encrypt with a specific set of keys. And here is an example. The property value consists of the name of the algorithm, in this case, AES, GCM, no padding, followed by a key update, which is the TLS message that will be sent once the limit is reached, and then the limit itself, which is an integer value in either bytes or as a power of two. TLS 1.3 is enabled by default on both the client and server sides. So there's nothing you need to do to specifically enable it. It will be used if both sides support it. There are a few compatibility issues that you may encounter when upgrading to TLS 1.3. You should check the release notes or the JEP to see if any of these issues may affect your application. So next step. Uh, we encourage you to download JDK 11 at the following URL, www.oracle.com slash Java download. Uh, you can also join the Open JDK at that website and follow us on Twitter for more information at Open JDK handle or using hashtag Java 11. Or you can also follow me at my Twitter handle, Sean J. Mullen. I often tweet a lot about Java security, so it's a good way to keep up with